Hello, I am Larry Wapnick, President of the Veterans Council of Indian River County. We are a not-for-profit organization, and we support debates and forums and getting people to vote. The Veterans Council endorses all elections, not candidates. This year's Vero Beach City Council race proves a real cliffhanger. Six people are running for three council's chairs, three of them incumbents and three challengers, all supported by various city and county groups, all trying to get your vote. Thousands of miles away in the Middle East, our soldiers are fighting to protect citizens of the Afghan and Iraqi nations. These people walked some more than a thousand miles to vote for the first time. Both men and women risked their lives to make their vote count. It was the first time that they would choose a government of their choice. We have had this privilege since the American Revolution. It is a gift to you from the veterans, both past and present. Our freedoms are not free. They are paid for in lives and limbs, and their costs are high. Registered voters will decide who they want to represent them in the city of Vero Beach's government. It is a privilege to vote, and you need to make your own choice of candidates and not let others do it for you. Hopefully, tonight's forum will help you know the candidates a lot better. They all have agendas and issues. Make up your own mind and decide who the best choices are. Democrats or Republicans are not the issue in this city race. You are, and you need to vote. It is up to you to make the move and make the difference. Support our troops by taking a few minutes on March 14th, by getting involved in the greatest act of patriotism, the casting of your votes, something a terrorist will never be able to do, and something that will make you feel proud and good to be an American. God bless all of you, and God bless our soldiers all over the world. Thank you. Hello, Vero Beach residents. I'm Steve Erlanger, publisher of the Hometown News. And we are very pleased and proud to be working with the Veterans Council of Indian River County to bring you this, 19, this 2006 Vero Beach City Council Candidates Forum. You will be hearing from the six candidates for the council for the three vacant seats. You'll be hearing from incumbents, current mayor Mary Beth McDonald. Thank you. Councilman Tom White. Thank you. Councilman Sabin Abel. Candidates Ken Daig. Brian Hetty, and Matt Moeller. This is the way that this will work. This is how this is going to work. The candidates do not know the questions that they will be asked. Previously, each candidate was asked to provide me and my staff with six or seven questions that they would like to be able to be asked or asked of the other candidates. For the record, Tom White nor Ken Daig submitted any questions. The Hometown News Editorial Board reviewed the questions and selected five to be asked from each. The sixth question will be one that was submitted by a candidate to be asked to the other. The author of the questions will be identified. Each candidate will have 75 seconds to answer and a cue will be given with 15 seconds left. It will be very important that we stick to this schedule to allow each candidate the best opportunity to inform you of their positions on these important matters. Time permitting, each candidate will have 60 seconds to sum up why you should vote for them for the Vero Beach City Council. Let's begin. You guys ready? First question, and I think it's something that, uh, something that everybody's interested in and needs to know, but what do you feel are your qualifications to make you the right candidate for the Vero Beach City Council? Mayor McDonald. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Well, I've lived in the city of Vero Beach for 25 years, and I served as the communication director for the city for six years. And so I know the city from inside and out. And I know the department heads and the employees. 
And certainly I know a lot of um, people in town as well. Um, formerly I was president of the Medical Auxiliary, the Garden Club, uh, Jasmine Circle. I served on both boards of the Riverside Theater and the Theater Guild, uh, among other associations. And I have always given back to our community, both financially and as a participant. And, and people know me, and I love our city, and I always will, and I feel that um, throwing my hat into the ring um, gave me and the residents um, a great opportunity to bring to light um, their government. Thank you, Mary. Councilman White. Thank you. I've been on the council for the last eight years. I have served as mayor for two terms. I've served as vice mayor for four terms. I have lived in the city of Vero Beach for over 30 years. Um, I have uh, dedicated my life for government and public service. Uh, I retired from the uh, property appraiser's office in the Indian River County Sheriff's Office in July of 2000. I am uh, committed. I am passionate about what I do. I've, uh, I'm chairman of the Council of Public Officials. I'm chairman of the Criminal Justice Committee for the state of Florida. I'm also vice chairman of the Beach and Shore Preservation Committee. I am very involved. I, I do what I can for the city. I try to bring money back for the city. And uh, I feel that my knowledge and my experience and my qualifications uh, should hope to get me reelected to the city council. Thank you. Councilman Sabin. Hi. Abel. We came here in uh, 92 and uh, eventually moved here in <coughs> 98. And since I've been here and since we've been looking around, um, we decided we liked the small town character of Vero Beach. And one of my prime goals is to pr preserve the small town character of Vero Beach. I'm also concerned with the growth in the county and the effect that it has on the municipalities, especially Vero Beach and also Sebastian. And I think that uh, my, my uh, work on the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council and chair being chairman of the Metropolitan Planning Organization, I think I can uh, help uh, modify or at least uh, ameliorate some of the effects that the growth in the west of the county will have on the city of Vero Beach. Thank you. Mr. Daig. Hi. I've been in this area for 30 years. I came here in 1975. I met my wife, Deborah. I've raised two children in this community. I am very active uh, in our city government. I've been attending the meetings for over three years, been involved with the Visions Project that started two years ago. I attended all those meetings, including all the neighborhood meetings uh, on the mainland and also on the island side. I've taken an active role in neighborhood issues and neighborhood concerns. I have been studying uh, about our utilities uh, issues concerning our power plant, reading the contracts, attending the meetings. Uh, I am ready to step up and serve our community. Uh, I feel that our city is very, very unique. I love this city, uh, and I want to see it stay special. Thank you. Mr. Hetty? I am that well-known voice, that well-known face that you see at the citizen podium, and you've seen me there for over a decade. Because of my involvement for 10 years, I know what the issues are, and I know what people think about the issues because I listen. I'm willing to go on the city council and research the issues and research the, the uh, solutions to the challenges that we face without hiring a consultant at every step of the way. I think that we need to regain control of the power plant. I think we need to sell electric at affordable rates to our customers and I think city councilmen need to work in that direction. I think that we need highly landscaped boulevards instead of wide bypasses, and as a city councilman, I'll work toward that. There are solutions to the problems that we face. There are ways that we can keep this, the well-maintained, low-rise, uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to ask for your vote on uh, Election Day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eddy. Mr. Moeller. Sure. Uh, despite uh, some popular belief or unpopular. I'm, I am a 25-year resident of Vero Beach. Uh, my family's been in public service here for over 25 years. I will make a promise to make decisions based on facts and facts alone. Uh, I'm interested in solutions, not pointing fingers at other people. 
and I will bring honesty, integrity, and teamwork to the City Council, which I believe are three qualities that are much needed. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next question. Very good. Thank you, guys and ladies. Next question. We'll start with Councilman White. 25 years from now, when historians look back on your 2006-2008 Grove Beach City Council accomplishments, what do you want them to see as your greatest achievements during this period? Uh, we have our main, main issue right now is, of course, is our electric company. And I think within this two-year term that we'll be able to come to grips with what we're going to do. Either we're going to keep or we're going to sell or we're going to uh, buy electricity from somewhere else. I really feel that uh, with the research that's being done so far and what we're going to end up doing, I really hate to give up the control of the power plant. And the biggest accomplishment is to get it retrofitted, get it back online, get out of FMPA contract, get our electric bills down, and also fight very hard to get our millage rate back to rollback. And it'd be my biggest accomplishments. Very good, thank you. Councilman Abel? We have six options before us to study for the uh, power plant issues. I think it'll take six months to a year to get to any kind of narrowing down or significant narrowing down of those issues. The popular feeling that, that I'm getting right now is that the people who are serviced by the city, 38,000 customers, would like to see the city continue in the power and the transmission business because the city has been able to get the power back to the people quicker than probably any other source in Florida. I also feel that if I can do anything to help uh, maintain the quality of life in Vero Beach and the small town character by working with the county and the other municipalities to make sure that the effects of growth are not going to change the character of the municipalities, then uh, I'll have done a great job. Thank you. Mr. Daig. In 25 years from now, I would like to look back. Uh, the, the issue that's facing us right now is our power plant. Important decisions have to be made. There's six options on the table. I have been studying those. We have um, consultants uh, that are, are addressing the council. And I want to make good decisions concerning the power plant. Also, looking into the future in 25 years, this is an extremely unique city. The people here are unique. And I want to do everything that I possibly can to keep it that way. There's a lot of things going on now. We're all aware of the growth that's all around us. And that growth impacts our city. I want to do everything to, when we have that, the, the impacts from growth that come into our city, that we handle it well and, and handle it with balance. Balance is very important for the future. So in 25 years, when I look back, I want this city to still be special. There's a, a number of people that have come here before us, people that I've met along the way doing my door knocking, that are very concerned about our city, and they would like it to remain that way, the special place that it is. Six to eight. Years from now, I would hope the citizens would look back and say when Brian Hetty was elected, the unbridled growth in this community came to an abrupt halt. In 25 years, I would hope that the citizens say when Brian Hetty was elected, power was restored to the people. In 25 years, I hope the people will say that when Brian Hetty was elected, <coughs> the people regained control of the power plant and our electric rates went down. In 25 years, I would hope that people will say when Brian Hetty was elected, the taxes went down, government spending went down, and the people's advocate had a voice and made a difference in this community. Thank you, Mr. Hetty. Mr. Moeller. In 25 years, I think that we should look back as a city council, as a cohesive unit, and as a city as a whole. Vero Beach should look back at the next two years and see that the city council acted with team, teamwork over those, over those two years and that the team of the city council made, a, made the proper decision for the future of the city of Vero Beach for the, for the power plant. And, and that decision, and, and I, I totally agree with Mr. Abel, that decision is a long process, a long process that must use facts and must be orchestrated using the, the utmost principles of teamwork the entire time. And that will be my main goal over the next two years is to, to, to 
gain a, a relationship that that the working city council can make decisions as a team and and that the decisions are made in the best interests of the residents of Vero Beach. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moeller. Mayor McDonald. Um, I also uh, agree completely with uh, Mr. Moeller. Um, I think the teamwork and cooperation is most important. And as city council members, we must always remember that we have to speak on behalf of the taxpayers at all times and never lose sight of that. And certainly, um, f sitting on both sides as a former employee and now as a council member, I always try to keep that in mind. And we do have some very, very important uh, decisions to make. The power plant, certainly, and I intend to focus on revisiting the property tax issue because I was the only council member who voted no. A lot of people are having a lot of trouble um, regaining their uh, lives again after the hurricanes, and it, it isn't proper and right to add increased costs um, to the residents and continue the city as it, it always has been. But um, I think that I, I bring a lot to the council and will always keep the residents in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Next question now. Should the city-owned real estate be leased or sold to developers? Why or why not? Councilman Abel? Should the city own real estate, should it be sold to developers? Or leased. Or leased. I think it's perfectly all right for the city to own real estate. Um, we certainly have one that we just bought, Dodger Town, and uh, that, I think the general attitude is that that should be kept green as much as possible. We prevented a significant development from taking uh, uh, what is now green at a very significant intersection in the town from, uh, from actually causing further traffic problems. <coughs> We have another significant property, the former post office land, and uh, I think that it wouldn't hurt that the city keep the land and possibly lease it out to a developer or, or some kind, with some kind of input from the city as to what we want for uh, architectural or, or use of the property as far as commercial space. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dagg. As far as the uh, city selling land, uh, everyone that I talk to, the uh, city's not that large. I'd like to, to see us hold on to our land as many other people would. As far as the leasing goes of different properties throughout the city, leases sometimes are good. And in doing leases, um, one of the things that I would like to do is have more citizen input. When, when things come to the table, I think we should involve our citizens, let them know what's going on, get input from them so council can make a real good decision. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hetty? When the citizens of Indian River County and Vero Beach decided to give two governing authorities a lot of our money to buy um, land, the Land Acquisition Committee, and, and purchase property in order to keep it forever green, we sent a message to our representatives that we didn't want every inch of land paved over in this community. When the government buys that land, owns that land, and then turns around,